music. Would you like some chocolate before you start? <laughs> I'll have it all the way through. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not doing it. <laughs> so, you, know, you, you have to mind her. Because. <laughs> so I'm Jamie Sweeney, and I am the owner of Juniper Art Gallery. And thank you guys so much for coming out. This is the first time we've done an artist talk for our book club. But David has this awesome book of his. It's called Figures and Landscape. And it has his drawings in it. So we thought we'd do something a little different this time and have an artist talk. And if this is fun, we may just go ahead and do lots of artist talks. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, but we have a monthly book club, and it's the second Thursday every month from 2 to 3 p.m. And if you can't make it, we always record it and put it on our Juniper YouTube channel, which I invite you to sign up for. I only need like 970 more subscribers so I can actually go mobile with it. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good channel, lots of good stuff on it. Whenever I do a change out to the gallery, I record the new exhibit. So, come on in. Anyway, um, I'm just going to do a brief introduction here. Um, David J. Emerson Young has been obsessed with art since he was five. He remained immersed in art while earning his bachelor's degrees at Indiana University in philosophy of literature. In the early 1980s, David founded Young and Laramore Advertising Agency, where he served as CEO and executive creative director for 30 years. During that time, he continued making art. Nearly all of David's paintings start as drawings. The drawings come from his subconscious, the place he trusts most. It's as if he it says if, if his subconscious has a direct line to his drawing hand, and he often doesn't know what the subject is until the lines reveal it well into the drawing. Once it's recognized, he develops the image, image into a finished piece. Young current recently uh, completed a 21 painting series on global warming. And if you didn't have a chance to see that, I don't know, did you guys see that when it was at the high? the uh, Far Gallery in Bloomington. Oh, amazing artwork. Very large scale paintings on global warming. He'll talk more about that. Yeah, um, yeah, and he had input from environmental scientist, Green Party leader, and Nobel laureate, Andrew Weaver. Young has designed and installed nearly 100 sculptural works of public art. 46 of these sculptures reside in the Indiana State Museum's outdoor sculpture series of state counties. So, He's an esteemed guest. His, some of his artwork is behind you here. And I will turn it over to David. We'll just ask him some questions. But I think he would, you wanted to start with the story, right? If you would like to start with a story, that would be perfect. <laughs> oh, first grade story. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 uh, the first sign I had that I was an artist. Uh, was ended up being pretty horrible, but I um, I was I, I was young. The, you know, I was first grade. I didn't go to kindergarten, so I couldn't write yet. I didn't have any. I didn't know how to write yet. And the, all the other kids went to kindergarten, so the te I raised my hand and said, "I I can go to kindergarten. I don't know how to write." And she goes, "Can you draw?" And I go, "I can draw, yeah." You know, <laughs> she gave me this book book that everybody else was writing in, and I got to do about 12 drawings, and and that was fun, and then she said, okay, pass them up, and I was in the back of my mind, I passed mine up, and this kid in front of me goes, look at this, five boys get around him, and, and they're looking through it, and she <laughs> comes down, she passes them up, grabs me, takes me to the coat hall and paddles me for causing a chaos. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first day in kindergarten, or, or, or first grade, in, oh or, my. in any first grade in school. You know, you know, so what a day that was. She had the right name, Mrs. Henshaw. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's an auspicious start to an <laughs> argument. <laughs> I really was, I can't believe, I, I couldn't talk to my parents at home because it's like they won't believe that I didn't do anything wrong. All I did was draw well. <laughs> I got paddled and sit in the coat hall for half until lunchtime. How did you not go to kindergarten? Neither did I. 
Oh yeah, because we we were out in the country and we didn't have any money and we, my mom didn't drive, so yeah. I don't remember why I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so well, she, this must was, be an artist thing because I went to kindergarten and got expelled. Oh, <laughs> that's oh, great! Oh, 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 but but this is your platform. That's for another day. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, well that that um, that book was full of drawings, and and I took it home to my mom, and she you know went through the drawings, and my sisters were older than me, so they went through the drawings. And, like wow wow and my grandmother was in florida at the time and so she sent it to my grandmother and i didn't see it again until after my grandmother died like you know 50 years later and it was my aunt sent it to me and it came back <laughs> so what were your thoughts of it when you saw it again you well I, I just said well that doesn't suck for a six-year-old yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious because the, the introduction said that you kind of draw from your subconscious. Were the drawings that you sure. did when you were six of actual objects in the real world, or no. were they also no. sort of from a, yeah. a fantasy perspective? Well, one of the great ones in that drawing, which is just hilarious because you know I was so innocent of a kid, was when my dad was going to a gas station and my dad was just crazy man <laughs> bipolar to the extreme and my friends all loved him because he was so funny but you know i was always afraid like oh what's gonna happen next and so here we are my dad's doing doing the uh putting the gas he doesn't let the, the, the tenant you guy come and do it he does it before they do it now we do that all the time now back then that wasn't usual and uh and my dad the guy goes can I help you? And he's way back in the, in the under in, under a car. He walks out, and my dad goes, "No, I got it." And and he goes, "Wait a minute! You've ripped me off before." <laughs> <laughs> and so my dad says, tells me, "Get back in the car." He gets in the car, doesn't take the pump out. Oh, no. oh. Off, and I, I look backwards, and there's yes. going all over the place. And my dad's dragging, <laughs> and that the pump is in the car of the drawing I did in my first grade. Oh. It's in there, and, and the ends has yellow gas coming out. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, weren't, you, weren't you supposed to be talking about how your summer? How, how what was your summer? Tell us about your summer and this assignment from this feature uh, from Mrs. Henshaw. Oh, it, it wasn't, yeah, just the assignment. Uh, did she say, did you, she, she, I thought you said that she asked you to talk about your summer. Um, no. Oh, well, well, you were supposed to, we were supposed to write about our summer. Right. And I right. did drawings about my summer. That's right. Including the, my dad stealing gas. Right. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, yeah, so it, it was, uh, and, and the thing was, I got in trouble because the kids liked the drawing in front of me. And, you know, not just paddle. The first time I got paddled, it was a polo paddle. Oh, you got more. <laughs> they don't count, they're like also wood. You got more attention than the teacher. Wow, the nerve. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. So yeah. so had you been drawing like all the time before that? Yes, yeah. so pretty yeah. much. Yeah, I was always. As drawing. long as you remember. Yeah, I, I can't remember not drawing yeah. and and uh but uh, you know the for the attention to those that got me in a lot of trouble made me start thinking maybe i'm good at this you know and mm -hmm. so it kind of encouraged me a lot and mm -hmm. and uh you know i started you know trying with a lot more with pencil and and getting the lines right before i did the crayons and that sort of thing mm -hmm. gave up on doing uh coloring books completely after that <laughs> you know, I just, I just, just want paper mom <laughs> yeah, yeah. so so, anyway. so when you when you were younger were you making more of these kind of fantastical things like you do now that are just kind of coming from your subconscious or were you actually trying to make 
you know, realistic drawings. Yeah, I, I was, yeah. you're right. I, you, I, that came later, the, the mm -hmm. subconscious uh, uh, drawings that I, I, I actually do draw with just, you know, I just get a piece of paper and start a line and I do it subconsciously. I don't, I'm not thinking about it on purpose and, and it always has something that leads to, you know, and, and that's how I start drawings and how I begin paintings too. That if I have a specific subject, that's harder for me to do. You know, mm -hmm. if I have a specific thing to work on, I, then I have to like think about it a lot and then forget about it and let it come up, you know, out of the hand instead of the brain. <laughs> How did your drawing evolve from being, you know, a typical artist doing realistic work to being done that in that fashion? Well, I, w I had a, uh, a great high school uh, teacher, art teacher, uh, James Doversberger, who was a really serious artist. Some of you guys may know him, but he's in Indianapolis. <coughs> what school? Were you uh, Lawrence Central in the northeast side. Mm -hmm. Uh, far away from where my dad took the, <laughs> the gas pump from. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I just, uh, he was a, a brilliant artist himself, actually, for a teacher, you know, and, and, and you know, he just, he, uh, he, would, he taught me so much. And one of the best things he did and the kid, most of the kids hated it, and I loved it. It was, he, Friday was always Art History Day. And I got to see all the best artists in the world and made me very humble. And the cavemen, you know, really make you humble when you're in high school. Because you look, they did this on rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so it, it made me, it put me in my place, but, you know, and, and help me want to learn more. And so uh, it started with that and, and went all the way through to, you know, the, uh, the modern people, you know. Uh, and and the, the whole walk picture of art has that living growth with it that was always interesting to me, you know, and I, I I was, you know, I still am a bit uh, uh, intimidated by trying out to do those guys. You know, it's <laughs> like, what can I do that better than they do? And it's like what you want to try to do, but it's, you know, it's an unbelievable challenge because so much great art has, you know, in contemporary modern art has has preceded us, you know, and. And so it's, you know, it, it's harder to beat them, you know, to be a, a revolutionary as much with, with doing, being a revolutionary with legitimate good work anyway. Mm -hmm. It's easy to, I don't know, run a car off a bridge and, you know, uh, <laughs> film it <laughs> as you're going into the water. You know, that, that would be good in some places. It was a great piece of art, I think, now these days in some places. But, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I, I just really love, loved it and end up doing advertising. I don't need to talk about that much, but the art was the way I got in, into it. You so know? did you go to college? I did go to college. Where? At, at IU. And what did you major in? Philosophy and literature. Because I took, a, I, I was at Ball State my freshman year, and the art classes were like, Mr. Dobers were talking this already. You know, it was like, wow, what, I'm duplicating my, you know, I, I did really well, but I wasn't learning. You know, it was like, so I just dropped out of art and knew I would just do art every day. And during classes, I'd be drawing. I do have 3,300 drawings in one book, book this big, this deep, that, that big, wow. from, from high school and college drawings while I was listening to class. So you dated a lot. Yeah. 
<laughs> dated, dated the drawings or dated the girls? <laughs> yes, to both, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was uh, uh, it, it, it was what kept me into art, and I could you know literature and philosophy gave me more subject matter. Actually, I think uh, philosophy not so much, but literature certainly. The you know the visual things that great writers portray in words, you know, it, it's show is kind of with us, you know, just in a, in a different medium. Did you ever draw from dreams? Yes. Yes. I, you know, there were a, a few of them I had, and, and mainly they were the ones from childhood that were uh, really spooky and uh, uh, visions of my mother being killed. Mm. My dad did try to kill her once, and maybe twice. And, you know, he was this bipolar guy. And, she finally got away from him, and life was much better. But we had to, we had to uh, had to go to my uncle, who had a car dealership, and say, "Okay, we're going to buy a car. And you, you're not going to tell anybody who bought it." <laughs> and we gave our mom a brand new car to drive to New England, where she loved the best to go. And so my dad couldn't find her. Wow. wow. That's how dangerous he was. You know. But he, he was not diagnosed, and, no, he, and he medicated on speed. He did. That's that, that's, he, you're right. That, that's a so big part of it. Really, he, it, was we, very, it, was, it was amazing because, like, when, you know, we, we know Dad being really fun. And, oh, my, my friends all thought he was the coolest dad. And they, I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm not going to tell you about <laughs> the real story. But uh, we didn't know at the time. My mom didn't know at the time that he, he was – medicating his downs with uh, uh, speed and amphetamines. I have uh, read a lot about the formative experiences of geniuses, um, how common it is for people who become exceptional in any field to have had childhood trauma of one kind or another. Really? Um, it's, it's really quite remarkable. I mean, you go through, you know, people like Ansel Adams had uh, vivid, horrifying memories of the San Francisco earthquake. Uh -huh. Pablo Picasso had a younger sister who died a horrific death. And these were things that happened when they were children. And I wonder if you have... You know, you're you're quite jovial as you recount stories of horrible experiences, and I'm wondering if you process that childhood trauma through the artwork. The fact that it's not typically oh. representational, that you're working from the subconscious, because that's you know, it's an engine that drives art for a lot of a lot of people that that they've got to process what happened. No one's ever explained that to me that directly, and yeah, I, I'm it's, sure. It's it, just, I, yeah, I, it's I, I can look at things when I, just when I'm drawing. That one, I, I, I don't paint like the really gutsy painters who just use paint and don't have a drawing on the, on the canvas. I, I have to draw first, <laughs> but uh, but when I'm drawing, it's it's all kinds of stuff comes out subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I call my drawing, it's all subconscious drawing. Mm -hmm. And and it just shows up. Stuff shows up. And I'm like, oh, I don't know where that's from. You know? It's going to be fun to look at your work now. We, now we've heard you explain it. Yeah. I looked at it quite a bit before. I was really intrigued with it. I thought this is good stuff. I really like this. Thanks. But now that I know your process, it's going to make it a lot more interesting, even oh. still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and. I still, you know, like when I was in classes and got three, three thousand three hundred drawings done in, in high school, college. I, you know, I, uh, yeah, you know, I still draw like that. You know, uh, not on small pieces of paper, so the teacher can't tell I'm not taking notes, <laughs> that sort of thing. But I still draw. You know, Nina <laughs> sees me all the time drawing. I prefer it to painting. You know, because to me, drawing 
is the initiator of all my other paintings, all my paintings. And as much as you draw, do you post on social media? I'm asking because I know several artists that, that are uh, really prolific and they're constantly posting. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I, I'm not on in that way at all with my art. Mm -hmm. I, I'm hardly on it, even looking for people talking to me, and I miss them a lot. You know, <laughs> it's too busy drawing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and trying to finish paintings. Dean is always like, oh, do some painting too when you go up to the studio. <laughs> You know what I think one of the things you said about being in college and high school and, and drawing the whole time, you obviously were learning. So it wasn't like the drawing was taking your attention away from what the teacher was saying. You were still learning, but drawing yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And, and there were some teachers in high school that would tear up my drawings. Cool. One, one's, one's a really great one. I, 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 this girl I didn't even know. She was right next to me. She's a year younger than me. She was real quiet in math. And Miss Beckett was the fierce, <laughs> most fierce <laughs> woman <laughs> teacher <laughs> in history, I think. <laughs> At least my history. And and so I, I you know, I would be drawing and Miss Beckett saw me drawing, and I usually was a little more clever. I kind of just was too down low like this and didn't see her coming down the aisle and you know, sneak it in under the book or whatever. And she grabbed it and tore it up right there. And this quiet, nice girl uh, next to me that I didn't know, you're younger than me, she jumps up and says, you bitch, he's a real artist! <laughs> and grabbed her books and ran out and was expelled from school for saying that. <laughs> I feel horrible. <laughs> You're a troublemaker even when I try. You have some good stories. <laughs> oh, uh, so. So talk to us a little bit about, I know it's a, a bit of a leap, but about your global warming series, because that's just such a significant um, body of work for your career in life. Yeah, yeah. And, and the reason that I did it is because I, I had a lot of science work in, in high school and college. And because once I was out of high school and I got my first and saw what the first, you know, uh, classes were so sim simplistic. And I'm like, I'm paying to like relearn this, you know, and that, and I just didn't go to art class anymore because I just decided I'd keep going on my own. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Your question yeah, was. It was, was just about the global warming series okay, and how, yeah. that, how that evolved. Yeah, and, and it's well, because, yeah. Of, because of my love of science. I, mm -hmm. I really started studying science and also, you know, like all of you guys, it's, it's like, you know, science gives us nature, and that nature gives us all the forms we want to work with, you know, and, and it, it's, I've always loved science in all of its ways, but especially, uh, you know, the life of uh, plants and animals. Why don't you talk about the, your experience with, with your good friend Jeff Lawrence in Washington State when you went to go see the, the, the Demings Glacier? Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, Jeff, my, we were friends because he was a real, one of the best scientists in the class. My other best friend was the best scientist in the class, but <laughs> Frank Levinson and Jeff Lawrence. And uh, and they were always interested in the creativity and stuff. You know? and, and Frank turned out to be a billionaire because he was so creative as well as brilliant scientist. He's uh, a Silicon Valley kind of legend. And... But uh, Jeff Jeff took me to this. Uh, you know the name of it. I forget the name of the it, glacier. It's called the Dennings. Um, I'm trying to. It says it's a hyphen name, but it yeah. was uh, one of the glaciers yeah. in in uh, near near it, Washington. It near was up Seattle. in Bay, Baker State yeah. Park. Yeah, and it, it, he took me up Baker there. Baker National State Park. Yeah. And Park. and it was shockingly beautiful, hmm. and the science of it was disaster. It was like it. It had received receded 
And so ancient ice was all that was showing, and it was blue mm. and and not a bubble in it. Mm. it, it all, all the bubbles had been pressed out. It was it was like clear glass. Wow. And you, you can't believe how beautiful it is. I, I was lucky to be there when the, the sun was in a good angle. Mm -hmm. God, it took breath out of mm -hmm. uh, You know, I just couldn't believe anything out of nature that wasn't a living thing could look so beautiful, you know, and, and then I, you know, learned about like, uh, hey, this was a disaster, actually. This beautiful thing shouldn't have happened this soon anyway. It should have been maybe a thousand years later, but it's the global warming is why it's, it's receding now and revealing all that ancient ice that's so beautiful in sunlight. Hmm. And that really got me going on doing the global warming series. And that uh, was your, your first painting with yeah. was, when you the blue painting. Yeah. 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 I, I can get the card if you want me to. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. But it was, uh, that was the start of it. And I, uh, I went to, I, I, I was uh, talking to scientists out of state that were on the Al, Al Gore thing. And I, I remember asking one of them, uh, do you know anybody near uh, uh, Seattle or, or Vancouver who, who's one of the scientists of the global warming? And they go, yeah, yeah, this guy from uh, uh, the University of uh, Vancouver, uh, Andrew Weaver, he said he's one of the main guys. He, he actually combined everybody's information and made it coherent and added his own and made it coherent. And that's what Al Gore read was his, his uh, I mean, everybody else uh, looked at it too and they thought he had done a great job. So I went, I found out he was the guy and, and I uh, and I said, look, I want to do this thing on global warming. And, and he goes, well, science isn't work, working, maybe art can work. Mm. And, and that was his, his quote right there. And he goes, well, yeah, okay. Uh, and, and he goes, but you just, you got to promise me you won't exaggerate anything. You know, don't, don't exaggerate what is the science. Yeah. I'm going to give you what the, the subjects are, what, how far you can go with them. And so I had to show him all my drawings, all 18 drawings before. Yeah. And he, like six of them. No, <laughs> I had to do six over, you know, six drawings over to soften it more, you know, not make it so, you know, so disastrous or something like that. I think it'd be nice to point out the scale of each piece. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, they're in two sizes. Branson, pass them around to everybody else so they can see the. Yeah, the these. Yeah, uh, the, that's a gift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have I have nine that are are uh, four by seven feet, and nine that are uh, uh, same proportion, but they're they're uh, six and a half by three and a half, roughly, but they're exactly one step down from the other. The same proportion. Seven, seven by five is a large one. Seven by five. Yeah. And then oh, this is five. Six, six by three and a half. So, okay. Yeah. 75 inches. Okay. High. But the width is what I'm on. 54. It's 54. You guys okay. know well because you had to hang that. And she's got twice or five times the, <laughs> the memory that I have <laughs> with, with details and stuff. But, yeah. Yeah. So your art reminds me of uh, the Zen uh, bow and arrow shooter, you know? Where you don't think about shooting your bow and arrow, and you don't think about I using don't. your pencil. I don't. Yeah. It's no, the it's Zen of drawing. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, it started in high school when I started just drawing on paper, and I was not try trying to draw attention, so, you know, and, and I would, you know, and, and so I might even not even look at the line. I draw it first and then look at it and say, what can I do with that? You know, turn that into something, you know. And it was drawing like that all the time. And 
3,300 of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my father, when he was teaching art, he, he would make people, um, you know, one of his ways he would teach would be that they'd have to not look at the paper and not lift the pencil off the paper and do contour drawings, oh, yeah, yeah. but they weren't to look at it while they did it. And oh. it was so interesting that- Oh, I that, never did a blind drawing. Yeah, it was no. really, really cool <laughs> that what, what would come out of that, you know? And it was, I think that the intention was to loosen people up, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. And he did beautiful contour drawings. Um, you know, he would look, but, <laughs> but where you just don't take the pencil off the paper and just wow. keep working. That's cool. That's a cool thing to, to... Um, remember. I, I was trained as a uh, a teacher of gifted and talented children. That was my my field, and one of the uh, categories that we would try to evaluate kids in to see if they needed additional services was a creativity test that consisted of a it was a page, and it had just some squiggles on it. And you hand it to them and say, use what's on this paper, you know, do something with it. And then you would have, there was an actual way of, of evaluating the responses. You know, if the kid takes the semicircle and turns it into a sun up in the sky, that's not a real high response because that's kind of trite. You know, so if they, they do responses that are very sort of a standard, you know, kid drawing of a lollipop tree and a sun and, you know, a straight line horizon, whatever. That is a kind of ordinary response, but there would be other kids who would look at this and see something so completely wild. And it was clear as day to just look at these things, you know, to see they would just be starting with a, a fragment of a line. And mm. depending on how, uh, you know, absurd or, you know, far-fetched the interpretation of the line was. It just showed you how the kid was thinking. It was really cool to see yeah. the wow. results, Amazing. you know, what they would yeah. do with them. You know, that's, that's how I start all my real work. I'm not like in global warming, I've got a subject. So I try as far as I, as much as I can to work the way I normally work when I'm not have a subject in, my, in mind but just want to start a drawing and see where it goes. And I, I just do, a loop like that, and, mm -hmm. you know, when I was in class and I, then I couldn't like keep looking at my drawing. I had to look up the mm -hmm. teacher every once in a while. So, you know, I, I do a line and that's where I got started doing that. And, mm -hmm. and, okay, okay, I got that going. And, you know, yeah, cool. yeah. A yeah. lot of kids start drawing early on as a coping mechanism when they're in school. It's mm -hmm. like something to help them uh, alleviate the pressure of them to deal with it. An alternate reality other than their home life, which you're accustomed to. Yeah. yeah. I didn't go to kindergarten, so I may have thrown first grade. I did you know? when I was in school all the time. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if that was something you would like to. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah. I really, yeah. And, you know, I did have a crazy father. And, you know, and, and there was that tension that my mom might be gone when I get home and stuff like that would wow. sometimes be that bad. It wasn't always that bad, but it. Yeah, it was, yeah. and to be honest, both my sisters and I and my brother saved our mom's life at least twice each, you know, so mm -hmm. it was, it, it, that affected something about my art, I think, you know, I've had to, uh, oh. you know, it, and there were some things that came out that teachers were, you know, kind of shocked at, and I would have to come out and say, well, my dad, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And then they go, okay, here, <laughs> back. <laughs> I didn't want anything to do with it mm. <laughs> after the story was told. But it, it, well, they weren't all like that at all. But they, they did come out. Like I think all of us had that come out when we're mm. artists. And you go, oh yeah, and what I'm doing now. You know. So I have a question about your titles because I love the titles that you <laughs> place on your drawings, and I wonder how you come about them okay. you know like do you do you just look at it when you're done and make up a title yes. like okay this, like, this one i love it's called looking for the god particle mm. the dream he had of tattoos <laughs> a couple discussing fishing <laughs> thought wave 
nuclear duck. So, I mean, I just think he has really creative titles, which is, is really interesting to me, too. And there's a lot of original drawings in here as well that aren't framed, if you want to look at them later. But I just want to hear about how you do that, really. Well, you know, it, it, it came a little bit later. Um, you know, I had a great, I mentioned I had a great uh, high school t art teacher. And I was going to have to duplicate what he taught me for like two or three or four semesters before I could get into the, you know, the studio classes. And so I said, I can't wait that long. You know, I mean, you know, I, I know where I am and I'm beyond the student, you know, the first classes and stuff. And, and so I decided to uh, do philosophy and literature together. The two of them together made it more interesting. I, I like literature a lot, and I did become somewhat of a poet. Uh, I could have been a poet if I, you know, but I went back to painting as soon as I graduated. You know, I'm always going to be artist most. But I did get some poems published in magazines, and uh, that's as far as I got really. You know, <laughs> that's far. That's far. I was going to say that's good. Uh, they weren't necessarily great magazines, <laughs> so, so we're, very, we're not good paper or anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it, it was it was, uh, and you know, I'd be drawing and writing literature, you know, right, doing poems and reading literature, you know, and I, I really, I think that helped my art, you know, like James Joyce, if you've ever read him. His imagery is so, it's, it's like a movie in your head if you're reading it right. And, and it's, you know, that's visual in a way. You know, it's literature that's like a movie. Well, I can kind of see, I mean, the question I had about the titles that you probably look at your work when you're finished with it and a story kind of comes out of it in your own yeah. Observation of your subconscious drawing, then yeah. the story evolves right. as well, you know? Yeah. Or a poem. Or a poem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they almost sound like they're they just do. like fragments of a poem. But <laughs> knowing your, your background in literature and philosophy and all that, it makes it clearer. It, it does show up in your drawings, I think. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't waste the. You didn't waste your drawings. <laughs> Oh God, my oh, who was my uncle Bobby? He loves me, he, but my mother was from a, a really poor family of eleven children in you know in Appalachia and the, the southern Kentucky, and they grew up there. And when I was going to college, I was I was I was on a uh, telegram, and my uncle Bobby just yelled at me. For like, like 20 minutes one day, your mom or her mom out to get home, get you to college and you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting. Bobby, mom's not paying anything for me. <laughs> goes, what? Because you know, nobody believed. I, had, I was a, a C plus student in high school, and when I when they announced that I got a Pell Grant in front of the whole school, in a you know what do you call those? congregations of, you know, and our, our, uh, my classes valedictorian was Stephanie Young, same last name. And, uh, you know, everybody was laughing because they just like, and you know, was announcing. And they announced it and everybody just howled because they knew, oh, big mistake. <laughs> yeah, uh, dumb job. <laughs> Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah, and I stormed into the principal's office, and and and, and one of the uh, the assistant principals, really good guy, he rushed in and said, "David, no, you really did get it. That's impossible. I'm C minus two." You know? It had to do with your SATs, SATs. In, in biology, right? You didn't Not biology so much. Oh, I, uh, the biology test in the SAT yeah. I took. Yeah. And yeah, I aced that. So yeah, it was the, the you know, you get uh, English and math and then uh, a choice or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I took that choice. And that's that's right. 
Yeah, that everybody was just how <laughs> that I, I got it. So you were an example of the kind of student that I was put into schools to find because I, my my field was gifted giftedness in children and children uh, who are divergent thinkers frequently don't fit in to the hmm. curriculum in school and frequently do end up being C students or, or lower because mm -hmm. they're, the classes are boring, they're not moving fast enough, they're just not engaged, they've got their mind is elsewhere. I'm and <laughs> thank goodness you had your art teacher because mm -hmm. if you hadn't had your art teacher, you know, who knows what would have become because you know, when you think about all the kids who are yeah. Not motivated, mm -hmm. not reached by the cookie cutter kind of educational system. They don't yeah. get the resources, the simulation. That's wonderful. Then. Did you find a lot of kids that? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. A lot that, that were one, not doing the well. Kid the droid. The kid did the droid. Oh yeah, I remember this kid. He was a, a family for immigrants from Paraguay, very poor, and uh, the, it was a very wealthy town, and half the students were the people who worked on the estates as the gardeners and right. the housekeepers and another half were rich kids. And so he was from the poor half. Yeah. And he was able to draw pictures uh, from any viewpoint. So like he could draw a view of a horse as though you were in the air looking down at the wow. running horse. The, the head and the back and the yeah, tail flying out. And as if you were up above, of he could just horse. visualize things wow. in any. This is how old a kid? He was seven. Oh, he could visualize oh. things in like in any direction. Talk about a spatial, yeah. you know, and talk, yeah. genius. Yeah. It, yeah, it was genius. That's, that's... And you would see that, you know, in all kinds of places. I mean, you, you'd have a kid who, we had a girl who had fetal alcohol syndrome and did terribly in all her subjects, but she had eye hand coordination. Like you wouldn't believe she could do origami. She'd see it once and she mm -hmm. could do it. So there are, you know, the brain's so complicated. And when when schools teach it only one way for everybody, it's a disservice to oh, absolutely and so they, many kids. And yeah. aptitude is, is based on, on test scores it can't and SAT get. scores. And absolutely, all. which is yeah. just, you know, that is a kind of aptitude, it, it but it's like a one. Like just one, yeah. Good test taking ability is like one little thing over here. Yeah. You know, and it's or a shame. And emotional intelligence. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it just. There's yeah. so much that we understand about it now that, unfortunately, we're backsliding a lot. Right. Yeah, I think to go back to what David said about his art teacher kind of saving his life, I think yeah. that is so common. It was that way for me. It was that way for Ransom, I know, in, in high school. Yeah, for me, too. Yeah, That's it was really like I, I was very intelligent, but you know, also from kind of a troubled, crazy family, although they were artists and wonderful, not not violent or anything, but but just very, a lot of tension in the family. Mm -hmm. And I think my my focus became art. All, art is all I wanted to do. And so every art class I ever had, I got like an A plus, you know, and I would get an A plus in English because I love to write. And I would get, you know, a good grade in anything that I was interested in where I could create be creative. Mm -hmm. But in the other classes, like by the time I'm in high school and I'm a big troublemaker by that time, I'm getting like C's and I could get a D minus because I was smart enough that I wasn't going to flunk. Right? <laughs> I, would, I would be okay with it. So my grades and I always think, you yes. know, why did not someone notice I'm A plus and D minus, yep. you know, because right. it wasn't like I just didn't apply myself or I skipped school the whole semester or whatever. But, yeah. you know, it was just so I think that art saves lives on oh, yeah. so oh, many absolutely. levels. And I know for other people, it's music, or, mm -hmm. but it's just creativity, you know, so I, those teachers in high school. Oh, my gosh. Critical. It's absolutely yeah. critical for that age. And high yeah. School, yeah. And someone's got to be there to sort of really uh, right. nurture and, and uh, you know, yeah. really get you engaged in. But right. you had an, and then he had our history that you taught you. Know, Go, Mr. Dover's for her, my, uh, from sophomore all the way to senior, okay. we had Friday art history. Okay. And that was 
yeah. the most important thing in high school for me. But then another teacher of yours, he he would give these class assignments knowing that you would do really well at the assignment. That's my fourth grade teacher. Right. And talk, Mr. About Mr. Mr. Alcohol. Yes, Mr. Alcohol. He was everybody's favorite teacher in the fourth grade. All you know, my I had a neighbor who was really a kind of wonderful guy to me, and he was three years older. He says, Oh, you gotta try to get Mr. Alcohol again. And he was that cool. And Mr. Alcohol uh, realized that I was an artist ahead of my time for, for that fourth grade age. And and he would actually sometimes ask me to draw an essay instead of do an essay. Mm. And he would put it up because I, I was so dyslexic, you know, I couldn't read long, mm. long stories and stuff in time. And he was, he would do that. And I, and he would put it up on the wall and, and read the story of the story, you know, the picture yeah. story of the story. So it like validates your, yes. what you have to say and how you learn. Now he was the only one that did that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, then, and, then, and then the other for the class, his classmates could say, wow, look at how good, you know, he would, mm -hmm. he yeah. would be uplifted. Right. <laughs> Of like yeah, my first grade teacher. There are in other classes to be made fun of because he was dyslexic and he couldn't keep up. Yeah. So this was yeah. another important teacher. Yeah, very. And and the and the, the horrible thing is that he was he was he never did anything to any boys ever. If that they the school fired him for being gay. Uh, and so many of the kids came ramming in, and I, I was late to hear about it because I'd moved out in the country and wasn't in that district. But I went crazy on it, and you know, uh, you know, he he came, he wrote letters to everybody who showed up to text him and said he's going to go to a new school, a different school, and they know I was why I was fired, and that I have. You know, I've never done anything to any kids. And, wow. But, yeah. Oh, this so is like the one guy that, that really, really got it. In my heart <laughs> right. gets right. kicked out. Oh, geez. Wow. Yeah. So we've only got a few minutes left. Um, I wanted to ask one more question and maybe open up for a few questions. Um, but I wondered what your plan is going forward with the Global Warming Project. Because it's such a massive, large-scale project. Yeah. What yeah. you hope to see happen with it? Well, I'm, I'm uh, really wanting it to go to other uh, uh, cities and hopefully into galleries and, and be there as long as they want to have it or whatever. And eventually hope somebody buys it so it's in one place. But I'm not going to sell individually. Right. I'd rather really keep them <laughs> right. keep in the bank in our basement <laughs> and have them you know like sold one of the well time. it's a it's a coherent body of yeah, work yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and so uh yeah i i, I we're but you're still working on a few more pieces yeah i am, I am. i'm adding it. some things to it yeah like there's some additional ones that he just wasn't able to finish before the show last May. I finished the ones I, I knew I, I had to finish, and then I added some tougher ones to mm -hmm. the part right. of it too. But I uh, uh, I think it's it, you know it's going to go to Cincinnati uh, May. In, in May uh, for a, a month at least. Yeah, for a month. Yeah, and uh, uh, and I think we're going to try to you know you know get it yeah get it to other places like I'd love for it to be and. The Art Institute, you know, mm -hmm. that's, I, I, they, they were significantly uh, contributed to my art life because mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I went there and just could they had to drag me out. <laughs> it's the first time I was in there. <laughs> I did not have floor to go. <laughs> wow. They did come back. <laughs> so a lot of that work is abstract. When you show it to scientists, do they get it? Do they get what you're trying not to? Not necessarily. Say? No, not necessarily. Uh, now, like one of the guys that uh, 
fronted money for this. Uh, Frank Levinson, uh, he gets it. He's but he's he's one of those really creative scientists, and that's why he's a billionaire because his sci you know his the way he did uh, fiber optics changed the world in in high fiber optics. And Frank was this little skinny geek. And I was his bodyguard <laughs> you know, in grade school. And in high school, everybody was like, oh, he's cool. <laughs> grade school, guy, you know, guys were picking on him. So Frank and I became best friends. So we were best friends, you know. He's really a great scientist. And, uh, you know, also a funny guy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question, and it's something that I'd love to have more scientists to bring in more scientists to look at the work to see if they if they they get it because I think that um, what really uh, what's really very interesting about that series is when you walk into the gallery and I think is they're they're very beautiful and so you're immediately drawn to them because they have the colors and the composition is really beautiful and then you're you're staring at this beautiful portrayal of, of, of the destruction, the degradation of the earth. And it's just that, that kind of emotional opposition that's, that's, that's occurring is very, it's very disturbing in a lot of ways because you. This you know, is intentional. Yeah, and it's intentional, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, not all that is supposed to be like that, but. To disturb. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of, it's awakening. You know, we, okay. it's, it's hard to believe it sometimes. That, that same friend that I was talking about, Frank, uh, his daughter somehow got a professorship in the University of Soleimania, Soleimania Iraq. American and it's an American university. It's an American, it's yeah. American University of you know, Soleimania, Iraq. And and the she told the professor, the, the head guy, uh, about my my art series, and you know the university paid to have it taken all the way over to Sulaymaniyah, Iraq, and me <laughs> with it, <laughs> and uh, spent like uh, uh, at least you know three weeks there, and and talking to kids and you know, having these kind of conversations, and and br they brought all kinds of kids in, you know like. Uh, kids that were trying to apply to that university, and you know, and they came in and looked at it. And said, it was, you know, it's really cool that it got done that way. And Frank, you know, managed to pay for the shipping of all these paintings that are. I, mean, I have metal frames on them that are heavy, you know, just like I angle iron uh, frames, and they were all shipped over there. Wow. That's pretty yeah. neat. And then they have a they have the oh. Gleesy, what is it called? It's G clay. G clay. G clay prints. They made G clay prints of them. Actual size. And then G so they have them there in there. It's a it's a permanent in their permanent. Oh wow, that's neat. Collection. Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, they're two sizes, but they're you know close and they got the mm -hmm. two sizes right too. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Which was good. Well, we're about at... I'm sorry, I'm, I've got to be boring you by now. <laughs> no, you're not boring at all. Actually, I could keep talking all day with you. It's very interesting. But does, does anybody else have a burning hot question to ask before we call it a book club for the day? Excellent. Yeah, just well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, David and, and Dina, too. It's This has been a real pleasure. So, And thank you all for coming out. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. And we will be switching out this whole uh, exhibit this month, and we'll have all new artwork, including work new work by Dina and David here um, at April first. So we'll have a whole new gallery to look at. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Well, thank you again, and I hope to see you next month. Thank you, Jane. Now, will you do a book talk? That is. Not an artist. Mm -hmm. You announce the book in advance so people read it. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, that's that's what we what we normally do.